Okay, thanks, Jody. Uh, welcome. I hope everyone's doing well. As Jody said, my name is Scott Higgins. I'm a research scientist with the IISD Experimental Lakes Area, or ELA for short. Uh, we're a nonprofit research based organization, and, and our focus is on freshwater research. So I'd like to start the talk off with a question, and that is how will climate change impact boreal lakes and streams? It, it, it's not a rhetorical question, it's a question that we've been asking ourselves and a lot of other people have been asking for years. Um, and so we're not going to answer that question in its totality today, but what I hope to do is to provide with you a structure of, of how we are looking at that problem and provide some results at least to our original uh, um, data, what it's saying. Now, it's quite possible and even likely that I framed that question quite poorly. And perhaps what I should have asked was, what's the impact of climate change on watersheds? Because our lakes and rivers are so tightly uh, linked to their terrestrial landscapes. Now, the importance of these linkages has certainly been recognized by others, and that is the focus of this quote, which brings up a second important point. Uh, the effects of climate change on freshwater is much more than, than the direct effects of temperature, it's the effects of precipitation, it's fire, it's changes in productivity and degradation in the landscape, invasive species, and a host of other things. So if there's at least two points to take away from this talk, it would be that the fate of our lakes and rivers are tightly tied to the fate of their watersheds, and second, that the impacts of climate change are more than just the direct effects of temperature. So here's a list, what you're seeing here is a list of our ongoing climate projects. So almost, so as you can see, almost all the projects involve external collaborators uh, and they cover a wide range of topics and those collaborators come from a wide range of organizations. Now, what I wanted to try to get across with this uh, uh, diagram is that almost all of these projects tie back in some way, shape or form to our LTR program. Uh, and we consider this LTR program that we have to be the core program of our, of our research facility and really operate as the backbone of our research. So I want to take some time today to describe what our LTR program is, the type of data that we collect uh, before actually getting into some of the results. And I did notice, I did put a question mark down in, in, in one of the project uh, boxes. And the reason was is that uh, there are obviously, although we have a number of ongoing projects, there's obviously a lot of gaps. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, you might identify some of those gaps as we go through the talk today and suggest uh, how we can improve our monitoring program or, or interests that you have in, in collaborating to improve that program. Now, if you've ever looked at a wetland or a marshy area and you've noticed that the water had a brownish or tea color to it, that is actually dissolved organic carbon, or DOC. Now, DOC represents the dominant flux of carbon between uh, watersheds, streams, and lakes. Uh, it's an aqueous form of carbon and it moves quite freely between these zones. Now, in other regions, particularly in areas affected by acid rain, uh, changes in soil chemistry uh, appear to be uh, quite important in DOC loss rates from watersheds. However, in the figures that I'm showing to the left, which are our three uh, inflowing streams into the Lake 239 watershed, you see a fairly tight relationship between uh, total annual precipitation and total annual dissolved organic carbon loading. Now, note on the y-axis that the scales are different between the uh, three different inflowing streams, and this is largely because the watersheds are different sizes. So the east inflow has quite uh, a bit larger uh, watershed than the other two inflows, and if you average these out um, based on watershed area, the, the values actually become quite similar to one another. 